Listen, you just went to see a movie called You're the One That I Want. People like you don't shoot people. The late 2000s to early 2010s was a changing of the guard for HBO. Its revolutionary shows from the early to mid 2000s, like The Sopranos, The Wire, Oz, Six Feet Under, Entourage, and Sex in the City, ugh, were ending. HBO's Bronze Age ended as abruptly and as mysteriously as, well, the actual Bronze Age. Curb Your Enthusiasm was the only survivor of this collapse, HBO's Egypt in a sea of surrounding chaos. But after every Bronze Age comes an Iron Age. And with this Iron Age came Game of Thrones, True Blood, Boardwalk Empire, Eastbound and Down, and Girls. Ugh. But there was one forgotten show of this Iron Age, an animated show that did make it three seasons. I'm talking about The Life and Times of Tim, one of the funniest and most underrated shows I've ever had the pleasure of watching. I may be the first person on YouTube to actually devote a video to it. If that sounds like a bold claim, type Life and Times of Tim review into YouTube and tell me what you find. So get ready, grab your priest, grab your hooker, grab a Charleston shoe, and maybe, just maybe, we'll get out of this world alive. This is my review of the life and times of Tim. Oh, and there aren't any huge spoilers in this video because this show is very episodic and not very plot-centered. There is one you might care about, but I'll warn you when the time comes. The Life and Times of Tim was created by Steve Dildarian. <laughs> yes, that's his actual name, who also does Tim's voice. It debuted in 2008. Before working on the show, he actually helped create the Budweiser Lizards. Yeah, remember Larry the Lizard? That was his. The first thing you might notice about the show is that the animation is bad. On purpose. This matters. I'll explain later. The second thing you might notice is that the voice acting is not bad, but it is basic. Most of these actors are just doing their own voices. There's no Tom Kenny's or Charlie Adler's on this show. As a matter of fact, aside from a couple guest voices, the most famous person associated with the show is Nick Kroll, who did the voice of Stu. But the meat and potatoes of this show is in the writing and the delivery. This show's writing was very focused on the situation. Put characters with established personalities in the most awkward situations possible and see what unfolds. You can tell that the plots of these episodes were thrown around and then written down, not written down first and then edited. Then comes the delivery, which is my favorite part. The screenplay was highly improvised by the actors. There are characters who talk over each other, enter rooms singing to themselves. There's so much fun and spontaneity in the acting, but it makes the dialogue feel real. And when the jokes finally do come, they land every time, because they're being said in realistic voices by these deadpan cartoon faces. See? I told you that poor animation would come full circle. It all works towards the greater good. So we have a show that had a script that was improvised before it was written down, and was then further improvised while being read in normal, realistic voices by deadpan-looking characters. And it feels unique. The show is simple enough that it could have just been a Flash series, but I love that HBO actually picked it up and put it on television. A show like this doesn't get televised very often. Something else the show gets on the nose is the characters. The vast majority of the show centers around Tim, an awkward, bumbling idiot who seems to attract conflict and misfortune at every turn. However, sometimes he brings these things on himself. So sometimes he deserves what's happening to him, but he's also not likable enough that you feel sorry for him when he doesn't. Which is good, because you're going to be laughing at him a lot. Tim, hi, this is Irene from Visa Collections. Yeah? Sir, um, this is a courtesy call, because you haven't paid your bill. Uh, I'm going to mail it on Monday. You've made a series of imprudent charges lately. Let's just start with a recent purchase of a Coney Island all-day unlimited ride fun pass. Can I, can I say something? Absolutely, sir. Go ahead. We got dessert coming. You are, you should be ashamed of yourself. Can you hang up on her? No, She's still talking. You got sir. the balls to spend money at Coney Island when you can't pay your bills? Were you educated at all? <laughs> oh yeah, and uh, Tim actually is low key kind of a piece of shit. He's easily influenced by others and is a coward at heart. He's socially inept to the point of barely functioning around others, and has even been shown to have some level of sociopathy. In one episode, he was even diagnosed with autism. If there's a wrong thing to be said at the wrong time, Tim will say it. 
Despite being the way he is, Tim does have a girlfriend named Amy. Amy is the straight man of the show. A lot of the humor in the show comes from her reactions to Tim. Stu, also known as Stu Balls, is Tim's best friend. Nice. Although more socially adept than Tim, Stu has other issues. Stu's main driving forces are making others think he's cool and fantasizing about hooking up with girls. These are usually girls that have shown Stu any passing amount of attention. <laughs> if I didn't have a boyfriend, watch out. <laughs> what was that? If I didn't have a boyfriend, watch out. If I didn't have a boyfriend, watch out. If I didn't have a boyfriend, didn't have a boyfriend, didn't have a boyfriend, watch out. Backhand. Whereas Tim is an asshole, Stu is just pathetic. Rodney is a total Staten Island bro who loves hockey and just wants to have a good time and party with his boys. Stiff, stiff, stiff Rod, yeah, he's getting paid, paid. It's a big old dough. He's getting paid a lot of money because he's in charge. Look at the big swinging dick. It's Stiff Rod. His plans are usually the catalysts for the episodes he's featured in. And then there's the boss, the chairman of Omnicorp, and usually the antagonist of the show. A complete and utter sociopath, the boss is a self-centered nut job who gives his employees all sorts of psychotic tasks to complete, usually at the risk of being fired. The show also has a great supporting cast, including Debbie, the advice-giving hooker, the priest, a drunk who spends the church's money to rent a penthouse apartment, and Marty, Tim's co-worker who cannot stop telling stories about all the women he's banged. He's basically Tom Sizemore, and he's voiced by Bob Saget. But what about the jokes? What about the content of the show itself? Well... Cut that, cut that, cut that. What's going on? What, what happened? I just heard niggity. Shaved. Don't look now, is Check. right. What does that mean? You look like a house. One time I bought a brick of coke. No, you didn't. I did, and I snorted it off the ass of the concierge girl at the Radisson. This is why we never meet the uh, sales projections. Ask me. How did I write that off? The brick of coke How snorted off. How did you write it off? Yeah. Cab to Kinko's. Cab to Kinko's. Cab How did I not know that? You can write anything off with that. Then, a one-on-one -on -one with Tim, who was raped by a bum behind a filthy dumpster. Amelia, voy a lubricar cada mañana, ir al trabajo como prostituta gay. It goes against all of my beliefs, but for the sake of my family, I'm going to lube up each morning and go to work as a gay prostitute. Los Estados Unidos es verdaderamente la tierra de Thank you, Tim. America is truly the land of opportunity. Oh my God. You know, I'm just gonna throw this out there. Don't feel like you have to answer on the spot. You may want to think about it. You met my sister and said you'd like to fuck her sometime? No, no. no. Seriously, Tim, right, you can't right. come up with something to do? You know, oh! Oh my god! Oh! You happy? My fucking eye! Oh! What was that, a blueberry muffin? It was. You asshole! You want me to throw a fucking scone at your face? Yeah, this show is fucking hilarious. The situations in the show are funny because they're improbable, but stop just short of being surreal. Here's a few synopses of a few episodes. Tim ruins an alcoholic sobriety by beating him at pinball. The boss's dog takes a poop in the elevator, and the boss makes Tim tell everyone it was him. Rodney's wife cheats on him with a hockey player he loves, and he gets pumped when she winds up pregnant because he gets to raise the kid of his favorite hockey player. And these are the ones that are an easy synopsis. Some of them, like the one where they play How I Lost My Virginity, just need to be watched. They're magical. Unfortunately, the life and times of Tim ended in 2012, canceled after only three seasons. HBO was originally going to cancel it after two, but ended up giving it one last hurrah, something which the writers took complete advantage of. Now, this is the part with that one spoiler you may or may not want to hear. It's more of a punchline than a plot spoiler, but if you're too much of a wuss to handle it, go screw. Because Steve and the crew were pretty sure that the series would be cancelled permanently this time after the third season, on the final episode of the show, they did something ingenious. They killed Tim! But in such a way that he could have been brought back if the series had been renewed. 
One of the Omnicorp letters falls on Tim at the very end of the episode. If the series had been renewed, they would have picked up with Tim lying in a hospital bed. If it was cancelled, Tim would be dead. It was cancelled, and so Tim is canonically dead. Which is fitting. So many bad things happen to this guy, it only makes sense he'd have an ending like this. The show ends as appropriately as it possibly could have. The Life and Times of Tim is easily one of the funniest shows I've ever watched, and it never seemed to get the respect it deserved. So hopefully you enjoyed the first actual review of this show ever released on YouTube. Yes, I'm claiming it, prove me wrong. And if you like this kind of humor, I cannot recommend it enough. It's very easy to marathon. Each episode is divided into two 15-minute shorts. It's only three seasons long. There isn't a complex story to follow. It's easy watching. And what of Steve Dildarian? Well, he sort of just disappeared for a while. But in September of this year, he did finally release a new show on HBO Max called Ten-Year-Old Tom. Now, I haven't watched a full episode just yet, but... Down the hall, what's going on? Tom, it's about your mother. My mom? What do you mean? Is she okay? Kidding me? She's better than okay. She's on fire. Wait, I'm not following. What? I'm attracted to your mom, and I've been watching her for years. At PTA meetings, at bake sales. I saw her come out of the supermarket. I sat in my car. I got aroused. Yeah, it's fucking hilarious. This is gonna be good. Hey, thanks for watching my second video ever. I have attained toddler status. By my third video, I should be able to wipe my own ass. Please consider donating a dollar to my Patreon. The link is in the description. Once we get a community up and running, I would definitely like more tiers and a Discord to open up. In the meantime, like, subscribe, spread the word, and stay cool, plebeians. You look like a house.